New York, Mr. Torres is now recognized for five minutes. Always a pleasure, uh, Madam Secretary. You've been a true friend of public housing, as you promised you would be. Uh, the New York City Housing Authority, which is in a state of crisis, needs every dollar it can get, and I appreciate everything that you and Deputy Secretary Todman have done to enable NYCHA to access new streams of federal funding. As you know, the story of public housing is largely a story of federal disinvestment, congressional disinvestment. NYCHA has historically not received the full formula funding to which it is statutorily entitled. And since federal funding for public housing is subject to the whims of congressional appropriations, NYCHA has received only a percentage or a proration of the full formula funding. So as a result, since 2001, NYCHA has seen a cumulative loss of over a billion dollars in operating subsidies and over a half a billion dollar loss in capital grants. NYCHA's annual proration has fallen to levels as low as 82%. And so by way of comparison, imagine telling a private landlord, you're only going to receive 82% of the revenues you need to operate your properties. How do you think most landlords would respond to the sudden loss of nearly 20% of their revenues? They would not be very happy, certainly. And it would create an environment where they may not even be able to continue to do business in that way. So Congress holds public housing to a double standard. You know, Congress imposes on public housing authorities the kind of funding losses that no private landlord would ever be reasonably expected to absorb. Congress starves public housing of the funding it needs, sets it up to fail, and then scapegoats public housing authorities and HUD for the failure that Congress has brought upon them. Instead of deflecting blame, Congress should look in the mirror. Congress itself has long been the worst slumlord in the United States, subjecting public housing to decades of demolition by neglect. If private landlords did to private housing what Congress has done to public housing, those private landlords would be sent to prison for endangering the welfare of their tenants, and rightfully so. So public housing is not just a footnote in the federal budget. There are millions of people who live in these units. And when aging elevators and boilers are breaking down and when roofs and bricks come crashing down, lives are put at risk. And yet those lives, largely black and brown, are often overlooked. Uh, on a new topic, the, the Federal Financing Bank Risk Share Program is a partnership between HUD and Treasury. It provides low-cost capital that finances affordable housing. Uh, FFB has largely been a success story, financing over 38,000 units of affordable housing throughout the United States. Uh, even though it has been effective, FFB is due to sunset in 2024. Does HUD support a long-term extension of FFB? We want to make it permanent, Congressman. That's great. And I've spoken to a few housing finance agencies that would love to see greater flexibility in FFB. Is HUD willing to improve upon FFB to provide housing finance agencies with greater flexibility? Yes. That's great. And on a separate topic, as, as you might have seen in the news, a, a building collapse in the Bronx uh, led to the displacement of more than 100 residents. Uh, since HUD is one of the leading funding sources for affordable housing, do you believe, as I do, that HUD has a vested interest in ensuring that all HUD-assisted housing is structurally sound and that the people who live there are physically safe? Yes. Can, can I just say this? Of course, absolutely. One of the things that I have determined that is going to be the determinant if we are a success is that people know that we don't want them to live in housing that is substandard or housing that is not safe. It is my personal priority. I appreciate that. And, and Congressman es Adriano Espaillat and I represent the West Bronx, where the building collapse took place, and we would love to work with you to figure out how do we improve the federal government's role in building safety? How do we support local and state efforts to promote building safety and affordable housing? So I hope we can work with you. There's no question that we will. And, and I just want to respond. I feel like a number of my Republican colleagues were like, are, feel like it's a mystery. You know, why is there so much homelessness? And I think my view is that the solution to homelessness is a home. When you have fewer homes than people need, you're going to have more homelessness. Uh, and so in order to have more homes, we, it requires more investment. Like the notion that you can defund HUD, defund affordable housing programs, and then magically create enough affordable housing to meet the demand. Uh, I think Congress is living in la-la land. Uh, so I just, 
I just think the lack of common sense that's underlying some of the questions that I've heard today has been staggering, but I appreciate your public service. Thank you so much, Congressman. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Nebraska, Mr. Flood.